Welcome to this edition of Mind Body. I am your host, Barry Brewer. Together, we will be guided by Yoon Park of Bikram Yoga Palisades in Palisades Park, Joanne Ree, NASA Certified Personal Trainer, Jonathan Kleinman at Evolution Academy in Cliffside Park, and Kyle Waxman, Certified Personal Trainer at Club Metro in Fort Lee. There are many forms of exercise, paths to wellness, health, strength, and positive living. Many disciplines profess to be the best, the most effective. This program, Mind Body, will help you find new paths to explore, new journeys to take with different guides and teachers. The course of life is the journey, with many destinations along the way. We have been privileged to share in the experience of some wonderful instructors and practitioners. Our team of experts will empower you and guide you through their worlds, where you will be shown the path to nurture the wellness of your mind and body. Remember, we are here to show you the path, but it is up to you to take the first step. Let's begin. Uh, I'm Yoon Park, uh, having a Bikram Yoga studio in Palisades Park. New Jersey over five years and I've been teaching become yoga over seven years been practicing for about ten years and I'm a become yoga teacher become yoga is very special because for 90 minutes in heated environment whenever you come we always do 26 postures twice including two breathing exercises that way your body can change your body can improve not like other types of yoga, we have the certain set always doing whenever we come to our class. I think that makes Bikram Yoga special than anything else in this world. Yeah, the room is heated up to one of five degrees and the humidity is 40% ideally, but that could go up higher or a little bit lower depending on the environment and situation. Yoga is more than just exercise. So when we practice yoga, we put our mind and body together. So it doesn't matter you're a first timer or you have been doing this like 10 years or 20 years, there is always something to do more with your mind body together. So in that sense, I think people are saying, I'm going to practice yoga, not saying I'm going to do yoga. I used to do computer science, so my co-worker came to me one day and hey, there is very cool like yoga is being done in room like sauna, would you like to come with me? And we set up a date and but that day my friend just like stood up on me. So I went there by myself and I fell in love with it in a couple of classes and that's why I'm here right now. Okay, the first breathing exercise is called pranama breathing. It's really good for your lungs and respiratory system. Actually, breathe in by your nose, exhale by your mouth, but actual breathing is happening through the back of your throat. It's the opening of your lungs and expanding your ribcage, and it's really warming up your body from inside out. The whole circulation is getting better. It also calms down your nervous system. So out of the uh, class, if you feel really nervous, you need to calm down, you can do this breathing exercise outside of this room. First breathing exercise, deep breathing exercise. Please interlock all 10 fingers, which are not pressed underneath your chin. Chest up, shoulders down, reach your heels. Let's begin. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hold it, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Elbows touching, inhale, close your mouth. Slowly bring your chin down, lifting your elbows up to the ceiling. Body weight to your hips, more air. Elbows up, one more time, hold it, exhale. Drop your head way, way back, shoulders down. Keep your chest up, hips fold more. Body weight to your heels, elbows touching at the end. Inhale, slowly bring your chin down. Belly's up in tight, expand your lungs, keep lifting up. 
elbow stop one more time hold it exhale feel belly softening tight keep your spine straight shoulders down hips fold more elbows touching at the end change Okay, my name is Monica Kim. I am a Bikram instructor at Bikram Yoga Palisades Park. I have been practicing Bikram Yoga for about seven years and teaching for about four years. I initially started Bikram Yoga um, from an injury, from being a softball pitcher for many, many years. I had scoliosis in my shoulder, uh, my spine, and tendonitis in my shoulder, uh, and that got me starting Bikram Yoga. My very first impression. Um, that everyone in the room was absolutely crazy. It was very challenging, uh, something I've never tried before, um, but I went back the very next day. I am also crazy, um, and I like challenges, so uh, yeah, that's what brought me back. Yeah. I'd say the, um, the most initial challenge to get used to is obviously the heat, and then after that, um, well, that never really gets that much easier, but after that challenge, it's just, Every day there's something different that you learn or your body's feeling different in another way and um, even though it's the same postures, there's something challenging um, just from um, a day-to-day -day thing. Um, well, there's lots of lessons to be learned. Uh, you definitely learn a lot about yourself practicing the yoga um, and then once you're in a classroom with um, a bunch of other students next to you, you learn about other people as well. You learn about togetherness and uh, community. Lessons that I've learned about myself, um, that I am stronger than I think. Most of my limitations are in my mind, and um, that takes a long time to, uh, that took a long time to learn and still very much a learning process. Uh, when I first started the practice, I had very uneven shoulders. It was uh, very obvious. You can see that my right shoulder was much lower than my left. And um, after I started the practice, um, it evened out a lot and the pain in my back uh, subsided. Headphone hold. Inhale, arms up. Palms together, interlock with ten fingers, release your index, thumbs close, chest up, chin up, body weight to your heels. Inhale, stretch up to the ceiling, touch the ceiling, bend your body to the right without bending your elbow to your knees. Continuously push your hips to the left, beyond your flexibility, hips forward, upper body back, body weight to your heels. You are trying to create a beautiful stretching sensation in the left side of your body, all over, inside out, from bones to skin, fingertips to your toes. Hips forward, upper body back, bring your body weight to your heels. Left hips to the front mirror slightly to keep your both hips in one line. Then push your right shoulder to the front mirror a little bit more, opening up your chest. Chest up, chin up, lock both elbows, palms together, inner stretch. Exhale, come down and push, and push, and push. Change, come up, keep your arms there. Inhale, breathing, hold long, so hold the breathing. Stretch up to the ceiling, touch the ceiling, bend your body to the left. Lock both elbows, lock both knees. Continuously push your hips to the right, beyond your flexibility. Hips forward, upper body back. Bring your body weight to your heels. Now you're stretching your right side of your body all over, inside out, from bones to skin, fingertips to your toes. Hips forward, upper body back. Bring your body weight to your heels. Right hip to the front mirror slightly to keep your both hips in one line. Then push your left shoulder to the front mirror a little bit more, opening up your chest. Bring your arms back, palms together, inner stretch. Exhale, come down and push, and push, and push. Change, come up, keep your arms there. Backward bending, inhale, breathing for long. Drop your head back as far as you go. Try to look at the wall behind you. Inhale, lift your chest up, spine straight. Exhale, arms back immediately. Keep your eyes open, your mouth is closed. Breathe in and out by your nose. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, keep pushing your hips, thighs, the stomach, everything forward towards the front. You bring your arms back, look back, go back, fall back, way back. Change, come up, beautiful. Keep your arms there. Hi. 
my name is Joanne Ri. I am a uh, certified personal trainer and fitness specialist here at Club Metro in New Jersey, Fort Lee. Uh, my client here, Tomoko, uh, she's in third trimester, nine months pregnant, and she's basically, uh, her labor date is really close. So I really focus on trying to relieve the pain from the back and also uh, preparing for her to um, labor baby a little more easier transition. So trying to open her entire pelvic um, complex, uh, the pelvic bone, the pelvis, so that uh, her hip flexor will be a little more stretched out and also her close the pelvic bone basically is open a little more so that you know she's gonna have a better um, chance to actually uh, give birth uh, better uh, for her labor experience. So we do a lot of um, uh, the you know curve her back to basically uh, stretch out her spine and stretch up more to really squeeze her lower lumbar area to kind of squeeze her uh, lower uh, disc area to be kind of stretching a little bit and also entire spine to be basically stretched and you know and relaxed and and uh, lengthening, you know, uh, so that uh, she basically will be able to uh, relieve those little uh, pain that basically she has. Also, um, a lot of um, entire her lumbar pelvic hip complex work that will be did in sitting on uh, gym balls or sitting on a chair to really make sure that her entire lower lumbar pelvic hip complex to be in a little more stable position and adding some exercise to really open her entire pelvic bone in a um, better way. We use a lot of chair and we use the gym, uh, gym balls and sometimes we also sit down uh, on the mat on her to sit bones so that basically she doesn't really have to put entire her body weight onto her ankle or knees because um, as time goes by on the third trimester um, it's uh, you know her body weight basically increased a little more also baby's growing a lot so that she uh, her body basically tend to kind of move forward all the time so that she could basically go Going to give a little more pressure on her lower back and also some time to time uh, she was telling me that you know her circulation is not going so well so that um, her toes and her fingers and her legs get kind of swollen so I give her a stretch lots of stretch uh, exercise so that uh, she can basically have her uh, the blood circulation basically flows better I teach a total body class, uh, low impact total body class, on Sundays and Tuesday nights here at Club Metro uh, in Fort Lee. Uh, the nature of the class is to build nice lean muscle. Our first group of the day generally consists of push-ups. Push-ups to me are the backbone of upper body strength, along with pull-ups and something like that. Uh, The structure of the class uh, consists of anywhere from 12 to 16 exercises uh, split up in groups of four, three to four exercises at a time. Uh, each group is done three times straight through with no break and then you get a 90 second break after each individual group. Well, sequencing is very important to me um, because it allows us to do sometimes beginner exercises in a way that will challenge even the most advanced participant. Ah, tricep exercise, whether they're primary or secondary muscle, we have a group dedicated to sometimes shoulders and arms within the same group because they overlap a lot. So I'll have somebody do a curl to press motion go right into a tricep motion. So not only on the press, the primary muscle would be the shoulders, um, and the secondary muscle would be the triceps. And then right after you sequencing, right after you work the triceps on a secondary basis, you work it on a primary basis. Then you go right into thrusters, which is a squat motion, and then as you accelerate upward, you accelerate the weight back up over your head into another press. So you're working the shoulders again. It's not only burning calories, but it's also burning the muscle and what we try to uh, convey to all of our participants in the class is that it's not about one thing it's about being fit it's about total body so you want to work 
muscular stamina as well as cardiovascular stamina. And sequencing plays a big part in muscular stamina and vice versa. Uh, engage the core. Um, full sit-ups are pretty straightforward. It's basically a crunch, but sitting all the way up and touching your toes. So, like I said, the closer your feet in, sometimes the harder it is. The harder it is to gain momentum. Renegade rows. Uh, renegade rows are a way to basically holding a push-up position, grab a weight, and with one arm in push-up position, generally you have your feet a little bit wider than normal push-up position. With a weight in your right hand or your left hand, depending on which way you start, you just row it like you would a bent over row with one hand on a bench and one knee on a bench. This way now it forces you to engage your core more all right, and forces you to engage the stability in your arms um, and work a lot of the muscles that you wouldn't normally get. Plank, good old fashioned plank. Um, but most people know uh, there are a lot of variations. Obviously the normal plank would be um, on your forearms, uh, Basically, from your shoulders to your ankles is elevated above the ground, um, and you are holding and making sure that you breathe. And it's uh, a way to build strength within the core. What a plank does is create strength, whereas crunches create tone. And that's a big misconception for a lot of people. A sumo squat, like most exercises, is just a variation on a regular squat. Um, the key, uh, to my class too is that I provide a lot of variation. Um, and that's another key. Uh, sequencing, variation, and pace really dictate, I think, a lot of my workouts. Um, sequencing, we already covered. Pace is pretty self-explanatory. Um, but variation is very important. A big part of my class is that even though it is fast-paced and even though I am yelling a lot, uh, I do try to walk around and I do try to correct forms and that kind of stuff along the way. It's very important to me. Form should be important to everybody. It's the foundation of you know working out. It's like if you don't have a good foundation in your house, your house will collapse. My class is low impact. However, there are aspects of cardio built in. When I say it's low impact, I mean we're not stepping, we're not jumping around. Um, but there are aspects like the skaters that are a cardio aspect, especially as we were gearing up towards summer, I had a lot of uh, a lot more cardio built into the class because people were trying to slim down for summer and we understand that. Um, so at the end of the day, we have them laying on their back. The, the closing stretch takes about anywhere from five to seven minutes. Um, the first part of that, what you saw is bring your knees to your chest and just breathing. And you should always be breathing through your nose and out through your mouth. It's nice controlled deep breaths to really bring the heart rate back down. A lot of times people and they can't catch their breath and it's because they're trying to take too much in when they should be nice controlled deep breaths. So it's very important that you're stretching at the end of the class. My name is John Kleinen. I'm the head of Evolution Academy here in Cliffside Park, New Jersey. Uh, we run programs for uh, boxing, Thai boxing. That's the impact program. We have a submission grappling program. We have an MMA program. We have a military combatives program, a self-defense program. We offer uh, classes in strength and conditioning. Uh, we also offer Hapkido training. Uh, we've been in business here for about 10 years now. Hapkido, for the most part, Nowadays, it's become a generic uh, word for a mixed bag of martial arts. I really see Hapkido with a definite history and a definite technical structure stemming from uh, post-World War II Korea, from Che yong uh, who was a student of Daito Ryu Aiki Jiu-Jitsu from Japan, and a uh, Jian Jie, which uh, fused those uh, Korean native kicking techniques with uh, the joint locking techniques and weapons, etc., uh, to form a comprehensive system. That includes everything from kicking, to falling, to joint resetting, 
joint locking, weapons, uh, various types, just about everything you can ever imagine. It was probably the original uh, mixed martial art. I started Hapkido in the late 80s. Um, I started in the U.S. I later branched off with an interest in uh, Korea and went back and forth to Korea several times as well as studying with uh, top masters here in the U.S. Um, I've been to Korea several times and um, I was one of the first uh, schools to be recognized by the Korea Hapkido Federation and at one time I was considered one of the youngest foreign masters uh, recognized by the Korea Hapkido Federation at that particular time. After the basic kicking skills are learned, you then learn Bokshik Joksu, or combination kicking. This is an example of Yangmal Bokshik, or attacking two separate targets, or in fact two separate people, with alternating legs. One can be in front and one can be in the side. This is Hanbal Bokshik, in which two separate targets are attacked simultaneously with the same leg very quickly. It can be a fainting motion or a real attack to two separate areas. This is D. Duryodhana. It is one of the most devastating kicks in all of the martial arts, and it is perfected in Jinjukhan Hapkido. You will spend many hours upon end training to perfect this kick. It is a kick with deadly intentions and devastating potential. This kick is known in Korean terms as Jungdan Ditoryocha. It is designed to let the defender's head get out of the line of fire and then counterattack, executing a jump spinning kick to the midsection. This kick is Anja di Toriochagi or Anja Torachagi. It is delivered to the attacker's legs. This is Anja Chunman Chagi, a low roundhouse kick, also delivered to the attacker's legs. I'm Barry Brewer. I have a master's degree in clinical and counseling psychology and a black belt in Taekwondo. I have worked in the fitness and wellness industry for over 20 years, holding positions ranging from personal trainer, Taekwondo instructor, and on the business side in sales, marketing, and club management. I know all of the instructors you have seen here so far today because I have worked with them, been their student, or both. I will be your guide in performance psychology. Performance psychology is the application of psychological principles aimed at the elevation and attainment of peak performance. There are a number of noted specialists in the field, not all of whom hold the title of psychologist, who nevertheless are performance specialists. Anthony Robbins, Napoleon Hill, Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, Stephen Colvey, and Darren Hardy, to name a few. Their areas of expertise, approach, and concentration may differ. However, they all seek to unlock the full human potential. It's all about the journey. It's all about process. Today, I am going to talk about a very basic process of performance enhancement. It is the process of tracking. Very simply, Tracking is documenting the work that you do. For instance, if you are lifting weights, you would record the amount of weight, number of sets, reps, and rest period for a given exercise. 
you can record your work in a number of different ways. On a slip of paper, a notebook, any number of different apps, photographs, audio and video recordings. It depends on what it is you are trying to develop. This is an example of my exercise spreadsheet that I keep in Google Sheets, which I access on my phone while I am working out. Tracking your work has a number of different benefits. One, it gives you an accurate reference point from where you last left off. Two, it helps to focus your mind on the task at hand, which helps you to remember to do it again. Three, it rewards your efforts. Four, it prevents misremembering, hiding, or kidding yourself. As I previously mentioned, tracking your work makes it possible for you to know what you have already accomplished. This is important because you build upon your last efforts, compounding your results over time. Tracking your incremental steps is extremely powerful particularly at the beginning stages and when you are peaking. In the beginning, it helps you to know with certainty that you are making progress, even when others can't see it. And at the latter stages, in your peaks, because you can look back and know how far you have come and what it will take for you to get to the next level. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, be well. Take care, explore, and enjoy the journey.